Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com. Uh, nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for uh, tuning in to finding us. Uh, stumble across our name. Uh, if you like the content, the only thing we ask, guys, is take a moment just to like, uh, like the video, share, subscribe. Uh, again, give us your feedback. You know, I, I think a lot of traders are always um have this fear of sharing what they're going through and and i believe that when you have a place that you can share your experience levels whether you're trading with us whether you're trading on your own whatever the case may be i think will always uh benefit traders so don't be afraid you know leave comments uh and see uh if it can help uh, yourself out if it can help somebody else out and maybe help maybe you could learn uh maybe get to find a new uh, friend. Other than that, just a quick reminder, guys, I want to thank everybody who's uh, taken advantage of the 25 for the 25 years. Uh, my 25th anniversary is coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, for you guys uh, who came aboard in the last uh, couple of days, I I'm really, really humbled by uh, the turnout, guys. It's very, very cool. Very, very cool that uh, you are uh, opening up your horizons to kind of see uh, what the PS60 theory is all about, what the pivots have to offer. Uh, and I'm, I'm confident to say in the last couple of days, uh, I think a lot of your minds uh, have been opened up and see exactly what happens when you trade uh, the channel. So thank you very much. If you are interested, guys, we're only going to run it for the next few days towards the end of the week. Till the end of the week, uh, the link is below. And if you are interested in pivots, uh, then come aboard. Come aboard for the next 30 days and see if it's a right fit for you. So let's talk about it. So yesterday, uh, again, we had this really, really big move. Uh, to the downside of the market. Uh, we talked about in last night's video that it's one of those scenarios that we kind of saw, we kind of seen this movie before. Uh, we talked about it uh, on a couple of different days that we retested uh, the 20 day moving average. And what happened the next day? It bounced. We can test it again on January 31st, the following day, it bounced. We retested it again yesterday and we talked about the line in the sand. For the, for, the, for the bulls and the bears of this 425. And what happened today? Drum roll, please. We bounced again. So uh, bulls definitely held serve. Um, you know, it was a little bit touch and go for the bulls yesterday, but they definitely held serve. Uh, you know, pretty powerful uh, move up today. For a while, it didn't feel like we were going to come out of this range. If you look at the 60-minute view, literally for the whole day, we were just stuck into this channel and towards the end of the day here, you can see uh, towards the end of the day in the last hour or so, we started powering up and it's the same, you know, it's the same crew of names over and over again. You got uh, NVIDIA just to continues to, you know, just to be NVIDIA, SMCI. I mean, where does this thing stop? My goodness, where does this thing stop? This thing is up another 89 points today. I mean, this is one of the more epic moves uh, of a name that I can remember in a long, long time that's actually a real company. So uh, absolutely incredible move. Uh, coin uh, with the move of Bitcoin uh, put up another $20 today. Tomorrow they report after the close. Again, we'll see tomorrow uh, if it's a scenario of, hey, it's already built in based on uh, the Bitcoin run up or are they going to challenge uh, the December highs, which in this market, because it could be very, very, uh, conceivable. Uh, after the close, you had Cisco come out with earnings. Uh, if this was 20 years ago, this would be a big deal. Not as much anymore, right? And the weirdest thing that happened after the close was Tesla. If you guys remember, and this is not a bad print, um, if you guys remember several weeks ago, Elon Musk basically came out and said, hey, if I don't own 20% of the Tesla shares, well, what's the point? You know, what's the point? I could save my, you know, I could save my time and energy and I can work on other AI, you know, AI related companies and so forth and so on. And the, the market obviously didn't like that news. And there was a report that came out today that there was a 13G filing after the close 
that said that Elon's position now is back over 20%. Initially, as you can see, the stock spiked about six, seven points. And then there was um, a lot of reporting. And I'm, I'm reading right from the report. There was a bunch of confusion uh, from this 13G filing that said Elon Musk apparently still owns 411 million shares, right? Go, go cry for me, Argentina, which is roughly only 13% of his shares, not the 20.5% that is shown in the filing. Uh, this was exactly the same ownership as he had on December the 31st, that he includes 304 million worth of options that he earned in 2018. So there's a lot of confusion. And because of there's a lot of confusion, the initial run-up was about seven points and Tesla is only up about 50, 60 cents now uh, after the close. So again, be careful, you know, be careful, uh, you know, about chasing PRs until you know more of, uh, you know, more of kind of the context behind it. But, you know, again, we'll see what happens uh, tomorrow with Tesla, if this, uh, you know, with this, with this, I don't even know what's PR, uh, but if this, you know, statement, I guess, from something or other uh, gets faded, or is it finally going to get above uh, this daily supply? You know, we'll see. We'll see what happens uh, there. But other than that, again, market continues to go bananas. That's the best way of saying it. Uh, continues to go bananas. At the end of the day today, NASDAQ lost yesterday about 2%. Well, it made back about 1.3% today. The Dow was down 500. It was up about 150 points today. So uh, market continues to be uh, out of control. And the question is, again, when does it end? Right? At this point, does it matter? Right? Does it matter? The most important part of the open-ended question is, well, what happens next? Not let's play Miss Cleo, try to predict the future. The answer to this question is what happens next? And now we have a definitive top of the range for the bulls to reclaim. And now we have the bottom of the range that the bears need to reclaim. And let's talk about these numbers. So write this down, guys. The five-day moving average, we close right on top of the five-day moving average today at 43.65. Everybody see that, guys? 433.65 is the five-day supply. That's where we close. So the bulls, for them to stampede back to all-time highs, we're going to need to build above this level tomorrow, above this four. Uh, 3365, 444 level, uh, 434 level to kind of get back to this 438, 439 level that it made all time highs for the bears. Pretty basic stuff here. So 434 to the upside and 425. That was the low we made yesterday. Uh, putting in on uh, putting in a bottom off this rising support. So 434 to the upside, 425 to the downside. Uh, for the SPX. Right for the SPX, it pretty much is the same mirror image as the Qs. So you have 5,003 to the upside, and you have 4920 to the downside. That is your uh, that is your um, that is your assessment for tomorrow. Right to the upside uh, and to the downside. Uh, if you look at names that are coming out of the channels for tomorrow, look at Netflix. Right, let me give you guys a couple of names. Look at Netflix. Netflix is very, very close, busting out above earnings highs. Again, is this the easiest stock to trade? No, but when this thing gets going, it does get going. Keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow, uh, confirming its earnings highs. Uh, let me give you guys a bunch of names here for tomorrow that I'm that I'm definitely, definitely watching. Uh, AMD looks great, absolutely great. Uh, AMD, all it needs to do is just get above this channel here to start making its way back to the highs. Um, Amazon is very close to reclaiming supply. As you can see here, uh, it's mirror imaging, uh, mirror imaging the NASDAQ 100 pretty much to a T. Uh, last couple of days in a row, it's been rejected off the five-day moving average. Again, if the NASDAQ can reclaim the five-day, I'm assuming uh, Amazon can reclaim the five-day. Uh, as Jeff Bezos has been uh, selling stock. But again, if he's been selling stock and they've been engulfing these sales and it reclaims back the five day, that's going to be, you know, a very, very strong sign. Uh, Meta, again, you know, we've been catching Meta here, Meta there, a couple points here, a couple points there. It still hasn't, uh, it still hasn't gotten above the earnings highs or tested earnings highs yet. Maybe today, maybe, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. But again, you have to assume uh, one of these days, if the market continues to be strong, uh, Meta will attack the earnings highs. And look at letter U, right? Not a sexy name, 
We see how many times this got rejected here, guys, right? One, two, three times. The last one above the 50-day moving average. If letter U can get above the 50-day moving average, this thing could really, really wake up uh, and get its uh, another mojo back. Tomorrow, you have uh, earnings reports from DraftKings, which I really like the chart. Uh, but again, we don't know what's going to happen on earnings. You have DraftKings tomorrow. Uh, you have, let's see, you have Coinbase, obviously, that's going to be well, at least the, the most widest, uh, wide, uh, widest to watch, uh, widespread name to watch. Uh, you got AMAP tomorrow in the semiconductor space. Again, the semis have been just going absolutely nuts. The latest one has been um, the latest one has been ARM. Uh, you got Deer. Uh, you got Deer tomorrow. It's going to affect the Dow, Wendy's, Sun Power. Nothing really. Shake Shack uh, and Roku. And you have Roku uh, for tomorrow. Uh, so again, just a crazy market. Bulls continue to hold serve, but it really does show you you could do very very well. Uh, trading both sides of the market. So it's very, very important to understand that. That's just why we, we're always prepared on both sides. We never tied ourselves uh, in the corner or our opinion. Uh, so let's talk about quickly the pivots. Uh, I got to run. Uh, my daughter's high school team has a quarterfinal uh, playoff game. Uh, so I have to get to that. Um, Tesla, 182 if it builds below can flush. It never did that. However, we caught a really, really good uh, rejection off the 187 opening range highs that actually went red in the day. It didn't quite get the 82, but a nice $3 rejection there. This is the only one that didn't work out for me today. Um, I started shorting this uh, NYCB. If you guys remember, that's some issues uh, a couple of weeks back. Uh, 448, if it builds below, can flush. I shorted it off this 448 level, went down like seven cents or so. I, I, I When I came back from the gym, I got stopped out. I lost about 15 cents. So Whatever it is, what it is there. Um, it really, again, really kind of shows you how randomly small cap stocks are. I know, I know this is not the traditional small cap stock, but uh, beta, I have a, a grasp of what's going on with these things. God only knows. Uh, NVIDIA, 734.50 needs to build. Again, what's left to say about NVIDIA? The stock is an absolute monster. Uh, stock ripped uh, initially about six points. It actually went red in the day and then ripped back in the afternoon, but a nice pop there on NVIDIA. Uh, TBBB, it's a name I found uh, last night for you guys uh, in the webinar. It's a recent IPO, 21 rejected twice, uh, needs to build. Here is TBBB, right? Finally took out the 21, trade up to 21.50. This is the highest close, and it's very long uh, shelf life of four days. But again, a nice little pop there on a $21 stock. Uh, AMD, uh, 73.20 needs to build. AMD is really starting to be a good trader. Um, it really has. So, it took out the 73.20, took out the opening range high of 74.50, went to like the 75s, pulled back in and closed really, really strong, uh, almost in the 79 area. Again, it just needs to get out above this top of the range here to start attacking the high. So really strong move there as well. Arm went pre-market. Uh, it went pre-market for like two, three points. I don't think anybody traded it. It went pre-market before, uh, before the bell. Uh, Meta, nice little pop there on Meta. I actually traded off the opening range highs of 70, but 468, 468.50 needs to build. Went to 72 initially, and then in the afternoon when the market spiked again, uh, went, went to about 74. So again, Meta continues to be good, but I want to see it, ready, gooder, right? That's my my English teacher in high school rolling over in her grave at this point, because uh, I don't think gooder is a name, is it? I don't think gooder is a word, but it is in my world. So gooder is there. Uh, other than that, Microsoft didn't get the 403.39 as well. So again, we're set up again for tomorrow. Um, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen uh, with Tesla with this uh, filing or non-filing or misinformation. But as of right now, it's only up about 70 cents uh, after the close, after spiking uh, $7. So that's it. That's it, guys. Again, for all you guys who are coming aboard tomorrow, guys, I look forward to working with you. look forward to meeting with you. Uh, for all you guys who are just watching along on the YouTube channel or on Twitter, I will never use the word X there. Um, tomorrow, again, there is no video. It's my usual Thursday night off. So again, have a great day. Have a wonderful Valentine's Day. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.